And you at four, we're taking a deeper dive into shark sightings across the tri-state area and the reasons why we're seeing fewer sharks in our area so far this year. We did, however, have two sightings in the Rockways this afternoon. This is police drone video of a shark at swimming at 84th Street, leading to a one-mile section of that beach, a popular beach, being closed today. You know, there is a free app that is called OSEARCH. The nonprofit tags and tracks a variety of shark species, and you can see where the sharks move up and down the East Coast, if you care to, sometimes over the course of, of years. And uh, joining us right now is Dr. Bob Huter, who is the or he's the organization senior advisor for science and academics. Thank you for being here, Bob. Good to see you. It's great to be with you. I always love. So we had that sighting right there. Sure. We heard we had that sighting right there in the uh, in the Rockaways, as you, as you know. Should people be fearful when you see sightings like that? Well, you should listen to what the lifeguards are telling you and get out of the water if there's sharks close to the beach. Um, it's, a, it's a regular sighting. You know, sharks live in the ocean. This is, this is their home, and the oceans are wild. So don't be concerned that the sharks are there, but certainly listen to, you know, the safety precautions of lifeguards and law enforcement and get out of the water. Let the shark pass. They're not interested in us. Are they, though? Um, but summer's obviously not over yet, but why are sightings down compared to last year and also 2022 for that matter? Well, um, in 2022 and 23, we had 12 shark bites on people. I mean, one of them in particular was pretty bad there right, right at Rockaway Beach last, last summer. Uh, that's double the number of bites in the almost 200 years before that. So there was a there was a kind of a spike, obviously, in these interactions the last two years. The fact that it's down this year is not that surprising. Shark bites on people is sort of a random thing that does tend to come in clusters, and then then you'll have you know you'll have periods of of quiet. Um, but there are probably some real good explanations. Um, we're not sure exactly what they are, but they might have to do with the shark's food being farther off the beach this mm. particular summer, at least up till now. Uh, but don't forget that, you know, we're not even, I guess, halfway through the summer yeah. and, uh, you know, things could still happen. So people need to be safe. Yeah, and I wonder, I'm curious if that's the case with one of the sharks in particular that you're tracking called Anne Bonnie. She's a nine foot long, 450. 15-pound shark. You can see it's nearly 7,000-mile path on your map right there. Is there a reason that she stayed pretty far offshore right now? Well, you know, this is a great white shark. Uh, Ann Bonnie, uh, we, we tagged in the Carolinas, and um, that particular species likes to be out on the continental shelf. Occasionally, the big females go way offshore, but she's up in, and you can see she's already past um, the New York area. She's up in Nova Scotia. Um, and this is not the kind of shark we're talking about people need to worry about um, close to the beach. Maybe, maybe very small juvenile white yeah. sharks, but not a big, not a big girl like Ann Bonnie. All right, but we're still happy that she keeps on sailing straight, keeps on swimming straight past the New York area into Nova Scotia. As you know, the water's been warmer in the Atlantic, a lot warmer. How does that impact where we're seeing more sharks on the East Coast? Well, the warmer waters uh, that are happening with climate change are, are, are forcing some, we're not forcing, but they're, they're, let's say, stimulating some of these shark species to go farther north uh, in their ranges. And, um, for example, species off the east coast of Florida are, are ranging farther up past the Carolinas than, than has been historically true. And I don't think it really makes them come in close to the beach in any great way, because actually the beach water is probably warmer than, than offshore. But it is affecting shark uh, distribution. Uh, that, that's clear. Dr. Bob Huter, we're so appreciative that you're doing all the tracking so that we don't have to while we're there in the water. Um, yeah, you can follow our sharks on O-Search. And I, I also want to say, if you want to learn about sharks, the New York Aquarium is a fabulous place. So go to, go to your New York Aquarium to learn more about sharks. Awesome. Glad to hear it. We have the graphic up there on the screen. And